Disclaimer, this video is meant purely for entertainment purposes. And though Alpha and Beta Canon are used as reference points, everything mentioned within this video is fan fiction and head canon, and does not actually exist within the universe. I hope you enjoy. Now, before we get into the actual video, I need to give credit to the person who actually came up with this kit bash, as well as wish to show you this. This is the kit bash created by Tribal Typhoon, one of our patrons and Twitch subscribers within the Stellaris universe. He's worked long and hard on this, and he even has a bit of lore background for you. So we can also let you know right now that this is supposed to be a destroyer-type ship for Border Patrol missions that is heavily armed with four phaser turrets and four Mark 15 phaser strips and capable of firing four from four photon torpedo launchers. I'm going to give a little bit of note here. It also has an aero shuttle and four Delta flyers, so keeping this in mind... To fit this within the STO universe and the model that I've been able to reproduce within Star Trek Online, well, I've adjusted a little bit, but I tried to keep to this information. So, Tribal Typhoon, I hope you like the outcome. And everyone, please join me in a quick shout just to say, Happy Birthday, Tribal Typhoon. I hope you're having a good one. Now let's begin. There are many engineers that can tell you the history of the Constellation class. A ship that ended up being no more than another average Federation vessel. Only achieving greatness once in the hands of Jean-Luc Picard. A pity since she was full of potential. Luckily, one corps of engineers at the tribal shipyards refused to give up on that potential. And lucky for Starfleet and the Federation as well, for the legacy of the Constellation would save the leadership of the Federation. With a looming threat from the Gamma Quadrant and this entity known as the Dominion, and the bold presence well known, Captain Tribal one day saw fit to gain assistance from the tribal shipyards in order to give the Federation what it needed to be able to fight back. And thus, the destruction, as believed, of the USS Krasinski took place, when in fact, the ship itself was now in the Typhoon shipyards being refitted. Warships are not ships of the Federation. The Federation is about peace and diplomacy. However, the Federation would need ships capable of weathering the coming storm. And so, the Krasinski had its primary hull removed, leaving the great potential of the Constellation class behind. And a new primary hull was fitted to this. Of course, the original engineering hull was again refitted. He had its systems updated and upgraded alongside the new primary hull, and all the weapon systems, shielding systems, and hull plating was replaced. The new primary hull had a more directed shape in order to achieve a more efficient bubble, and though this secondary hull had a more compact design, she was able to still utilize her 10 decks combined with the 350 crew and capable of holding on to 1,250 passengers with a total evacuation limit of 3,200. The Constellation's eight photon torpedo launchers were replaced with modular variable yield photon torpedo launchers of the latest generation, while its six Type 8 phaser emitters got the real upgrade. Now equipped with eight Type 11 variable multi-emitter phaser strips, 
This ship could really pack a punch. However, her real secret laid within two of her four probe launchers, the forward two to be exact, which were now equipped with a single matter warhead module that could be launched from either one, giving it two shots in total. These were a last result as the detonation of these warheads was quite devastating. With a little background assistance, the Typhoon shipyards were also able to get their hands on the specifications of ablative armor and thus the new Krasinski class was able to take far more damage. On top of this, her original deflector shielding systems were upgraded for a new phased reactive shielding system. She also had her warp nacelles upgraded with the warp coil systems found in a Galaxy class. The new compact variant was suspected to produce less power, however, with the hidden potential of the Constellation's engineering design, this would be irrelevant. Her warp core was replaced with a pair of experimental warp cores that you would also later find on the Defiant class. This resulted in a massive improvement to the cruising and maximum warp speeds, now being taken from a cruising speed of warp 5.2 up to a cruising speed of warp 6.8 and a maximum warp factor from 9.2 up to an impressive 9.9. .9. As if that wasn't enough, the Constellation's pair of twin impulse Emitters were improved vastly, being reinforced and with the impulse reactors being heavily upgraded to handle much more power. Then, substantially, the main hull being equipped with its own pair of impulse reactors, resulting in this ship being able to utilize the full power through its impulse systems. On top of that, the RCS was heavily upgraded with a new experimental variant. Now this may sound like a contradiction seeing as the Constellation class only used two Federation shuttles and worker bees, but the Kruskinski class would never be able to utilize with its sleek format and design the same level of shuttle bay efficiency. However, in order to counteract this, she was equipped with three large hangars that had doors that were designed specifically to function similar to the NX class doors. This would allow her to carry a maximum of 22 shuttles or fighters, depending on the situation. However, though the bow hangar was restricted to only carrying shuttles or fighters, the port and starboard hangars could also carry runabouts at the maximum of two. And to utilize her raw potential in command roles efficiently, she was given a specialized bridge that not only functioned as any normal bridge would, but also gave for long range communications and transmissions so that she could, in essence, function as a command point. Thankfully, the combination of new technologies drew out the latent potential of the Constellation class, and the Kraskinski class was finished just in the nick of time, with her trial run actually being not only off the record, but kept top secret up to now. You see, just prior to the beginning of the Dominion War, a Federation leadership vessel was captured by a command dreadnought of the Jem'Hadar and multiple attack craft. The Kruskinski was not only the fastest ship to get there, beating all others, but she was powerful enough to get the job done alone. She rescued the Federation leadership and she proved that Starfleet could no longer go about just believing in peace. It would not be long before Cisco brought the Defiant to bear. It would not be long before the War with the Dominion rose. The Kuskinski class did function during the Dominion War, however, she was kept quiet into the background. After all, a ship developed under the radar of the Federation, now that couldn't be made public knowledge. Yet, her lineage would be respected, and later, 
the Kruskinski line would receive a refit, bringing her up to serve alongside the Sovereign, the Nova and the Prometheus. May the lineage of the Kruskinski fly on. So guys, thank you for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. And can I say a huge thank you to Tribal Typhoon, who is the mastermind behind this kit bash. And this, the beautiful design he showed off, as well as the other designs he's shown off, from his Stellaris playing. I tried to get this ship that I've shown today to fit in between the iterations of the Constellation and Tribal's Kruskinski class. And I hope that the specs and specifications that I gave it are fitting to you guys. If you've enjoyed the video and think it deserves it, please consider hitting that like button and sharing as that really helps out. And can I also say a massive thank you to my Patreons, my donators and my Twitch subscribers who helped to make this kind of video possible. After all, the more I earn via that, the more time I have to spend in doing this. It means the world, guys, and I really do appreciate every bit of support. On that same vein and note, I would just like to say, if you want to see more of these videos, please let me know. Give me some ideas of where you think I should go. Just say a shit class that you think I should look at trying to kit bash. Maybe I will. But with that being said, for now, <laughs> guys, again, thank you for watching. Stay safe, and remember, live long and prosper, my friends. Ciao for now.